Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Shark. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Have you ever wondered how a butterfly and a caterpillar can contain the same genome and yet be so completely different? That is epigenetics. Well, you know, that's totally true. And it is just amazing to see how many publications are coming out on epigenetics. And suddenly they just absolutely seem to be everywhere. It's true, you know, and epigenetics is probably the most important biological process nobody thinks about, at least until now. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, epigenetics is a study of changes in organisms caused by modifications of gene expression rather than alterations in the genetic code itself. I mean, think about it. Your heart cell is different from your brain cell, and they both contain the same DNA. In our own bodies, our cells carry the same genome, but different tissues have different appearances and functions. And all of that is sculpted by epigenetics. Well, you know, in the same way, epigenetics changes the way, uh, you know, the genes are expressed in cancer. You know, wait a minute. Isn't cancer driven by mutations in the genome? Oh, yes, but it turns out those mutations are often in epigenetic modulators. And there's an excellent review on c cancer epigenetics by Dawson et al. in Cell. One of the examples they mention is follicular lymphoma, where close to 90% of the cases have recurrent mutations in uh, uh, the histone methyl transferase MLL2. Hmm. Now, histone methylation is just one of the mechanisms. There are a couple of reviews that cover all the methods, um, such as DNA methylation, hydroxymethylation, RNA methylation, microRNAs, RNA editing, the list just goes on and on. You know, RNA editing is a really good example uh, of the impact technology is making on the field. Editing events may include insertions, deletions, and base substitutions of single nucleotides within an RNA molecule. To find a single base mutation in a rare RNA molecule requires a very sensitive technology with a very, very high level of accuracy. That's absolutely right. And if you combine it with ingenious sample prep methods, such as, you know, let's say, chip sequencing or bisulfite sequencing, we now at last have a powerful set of tools to study these processes. You know, these processes are complex and a very large number of variables uh, are involved in each of these experiments. So you need a very, very good experimental design. As you know, my PI always said, controls, controls, controls. <laughs> <laughs> you need a relatively large number of samples to get statistically significant results after false discovery correction. And you have to be very careful to control variables because um, epigenetics responds to changes in the environment. You know, that's a very, very important point that we really haven't talked about. But, uh, you, you can think of two types of epigenetics, conserved and responsive. Tissue development, for example, uh, where the epigenome changes during mammalian brain development, is, is a relatively conserved process. It's, it's been the same way for, for uh, mammals for a long time. On the other hand, epigenomics can be responsive to environmental influences such as stress and nutrition, where you can see a change within one generation. It is a way to rapidly respond to changes in the environment. And of course, you know, those changes are inherited by the offspring. So it becomes a very interesting question. How does your lifestyle influence your offspring? You know, that's a really scary thought. In the review by Hurd and Martinson, they come to the conclusion that although the inheritance of epigenetic characteristics can occur, just how much is due to the environment and the extent to which it happens in humans particularly, it's still unclear. That's true, and you know, these studies are still in their very early stages, but it has the potential to reopen the debate about biology versus society, as Melanie put, points it out. You know, it's the, the old nature versus nurture story, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the evidence unfolds over the next couple of years. Well, you know, here we are. We started with butterflies and end with changes in society. Um, in some ways, that is symbolic of just what epigenetic genetics is. It touches every aspect of life. Well, but being the social butterflies that we are, it's time to go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, many of the topics covered in this discussion are covered in more detail in our other epigenetics episodes. Check out our website for more information. Thank you and have a great day. Bye. Bye.